Okay, last time we had the uh, Commodore Plus 4. This time, the Commodore 16. Now this was designed as a VIC-20 replacement. And as you can see from its style, it looks very similar to the VIC-20 or the Commodore 64. Um, definitely major differences between them, however. Start off with the memory. Um, it's basically based on the same chipset as the Plus 4, but very cut down version. Missing certain features that the Plus 4 had, um, but still has the same amount of colours it can show. I think it's 121 colours. Um, still a lovely machine, as I say, love the style of the case, obviously, because it is the same as a VIC-20 and Commodore 64. They have changed some keys for all, if you have a look there. For example, this is a UK keyboard, so you've got the pound and the equals, and then you've got your cursor keys at the top on the Commodore 64. These ones are usually your cursor keys, and then you've got to use the shift key to up, down, left, right, etc. Anyway, the main thing is, let's see if this actually works. So... Without further ado, let's put some power on it and see what we got. This time we got a Commodore 16. This was Commodore's idea as a replacement of a VIC-20. And again, uses the same case as a VIC-20 or a Commodore 64. It's different color, different color keys. So we got joystick one, joystick two. Power button reset, very similar to the plus four. We've got a cartridge pull, we've got an RF out, we've got this HL part here which is not being used so I'm assuming that is for American machines and you've got a video out, a serial out and then your cassette input. Again all using very similar things to the Plus 4, however power wise as you can see the Plus 4 has that square connector. The C16 only has a 9 volt, just a standard barrel jack, 2.1 mil barrel jack connector for your power. However, on a Commodore 16, this is center negative, externally positive. So for now, I'm just going to use a universal power supply. So what's good with this is you've got an arrow on the side and then on the side of the actual fitting you've got which way around you need to put it if you want it center positive or center negative. But again what I'm going to do is put this in and I'm just going to check it with my uh, check it with my multimeter as well. Just going to set it to 9 volts DC. That's all this requires. 9 volts DC, 1 amp. You can even use a Sinclair Spectrum power supply so you can see center negative if i do it the other way around i'm getting minus nine volts so just going to plug that in turn it on we got power that's a good start so now i thought i'd try connecting everything up and just see what we get see if this is a working machine or not excuse the jaunty batman angle the uh, tripod moved on me as you can see, our blank screen, that's not good. So we'll open it up and have a look. Now, there are a few culprits in here. Obviously, our 8501 processor could be could be the TED chip, could be the PLA. Just going to disconnect the keyboard and power just to move that out of the way. So that is our TED chip, our 83... 60R2 TED, which stands for the text editing device, which handles your sound, I.O., stuff like that. Our main CPU, the 8501. Then that's our PLA, which handles the memory. And we've got our kernel ROM chip below that. And then we've got our basic ROM chip under that. What I thought I would do, first things first, just make sure the voltage is good. So we're getting 8.8 .8 volts in. It's a regulated supply. Just going to check on the voltage regulator. So I should be getting around 8, 9 volts in, 8.7 there, and 4.8 volts out. So that all looks good. First thing I thought I'd try, though, is just removing the 8501 chip, the main CPU, just see what we get. Now, if you remember last time on the Plus 4s, it was literally the last chip that I replaced was the one that was causing the issue. 
So let's see if we're lucky this time. Yeah. It looks like it's our CPU. The uh, 8360R2 TED, though, display does look a little bit sketchy. So, um, might need replacing. Again, ideally, that should have a heatsink on it anyway, because that chip does get quite hot and they are quite prone to failure. Good thing with the keyboard is there is only one way you can put it in it's got a little pin missing. The actual light on the front, you could put it around the wrong way, but just bear in mind that your red cable should be to the left hand side black in the middle just testing the keyboard here all that looks good again the F keys do different commands so again I thought I would try our old favorite Vegas jackpot again see if I can get this working on a Commodore 16 because it is designed for a Commodore 16 as you can see on the screen now, let me just try this. There is a little bit of ghosting on that screen, so chances are the 8360R2 TED chip might be on its way out. That doesn't look good. It tells me. Well, I guess I'm never going to get a Play Vegas jackpot. It's looking bleak for your Vegas jackpots. I thought I'd try it again. This time, not touching anything, just typing in the run. And what I've done, I've just let it go to the end of the tape just to see what I get, just see graphically. Because again, that, that intermediate loading screen looks horrendous. So I'm thinking there may be an issue here. Hundred and forty one. Are you kidding me? Right, F three to insert coins. Let's insert our coins. So my assumption here is that maybe the TED chip has got a little bit of an issue with it, certain graphic modes, and that might be why the screen isn't loading properly. However, I did get that on the plus four as well, but it wouldn't even load the game. But that's looking good. That is the controls for it all. Like I say, there is nothing else. And that is the loading instructions for it all. So, just like a real jackpot machine, I can lose my money just as easily on this, but at least it's virtual money. But that C16 looks good. good i'll see you next time so just want to show you this that's how far it got before it finished that's what it ended on the last ream of tape could not have fitted it any better